Hello, N1CLC here. As I look back on the SOTA 360 series on my YouTube channel, I realize that I left out one important thing, and that is, what do you do if you're not an activator? You want to chase. You can't get out of the house because it's pouring rain or you, whatever the reason is, and you want to chase other operators that are activating doing SOTA. So, in this video, I'm going to take you through step by step on how to do that. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie. Summit's on the air. So to 360. Like I said, I'm going to cover chasing. So in the previous episodes, I covered all the things that you need to know around activating. All the plan and prep and then actual activation and then doing the paperwork at the end. That is logging your contacts. In this installment, I'm going to talk about chasing. That is, you want to contact uh, guys that are doing summits that are on a summit that are activating right now. So. How the heck do you do that? We're going to, it's pretty darn simple. We're going to run through what equipment you need, finding an activator, executing the chase, and then logging your contacts for points. Yep, chasers get points too. And, oh, by the way, you don't have to be sitting at home to chase. You can do it from anywhere. In fact, you can do it from another summit. So, let's get started. What do you need? Well, that's pretty simple. You just need one of these. It's called a radio. Um, a simple HT will do. But the basic thing is, you just need a radio that will communicate on the same frequency as the operator on the summit. You can do it from home, or you can do it from a summit. And I've used this a lot from summits to get to talk to an operator on another summit. So I was chasing, but we were getting summit to summit points as well. Um, that was a lot of fun to really see how far a simple HT will go. But the bottom line is you need a radio that will run on the same frequency as the operator on the mountain. It could be one of these. It could be a VHF radio or UHF radio um, as a base station, um, 50 watts, whatever you want to pump out into your fancy antenna. Um, or HF. I typically use a, a 7300. Um, at my home station. I also cha uh, chase from summits. So whatever radio I have up there, I'll be chasing you if you're on a summit. Um, your antenna can be as simple or as fancy as, as, as you want. I have a, a very simple vertical in the backyard. So um, you just need to be able to communicate. So you need to be able to find this guy. So it would really be handy to have a computer um, with internet access or even your cell phone. So we'll talk about how to find a chaser, or excuse me, an activator while you're chasing using uh, some real simple uh, programs to see where he or she is at and uh, what frequency they're on and all that good stuff. So in essence, that's all the equipment you need. Um, it'd be handy to have a logging program so you could jot all this stuff down so you can get your points at the end. So let's talk about finding that activator. Okay, we're down here on finding an activator. How do we do that? Well, we go to one of two places and we look at alerts and we can look at spots. So let's jump over to the, the first place, which is called sodawatch.soda.org.uk. You go there with your computer uh, that has internet access or a smartphone uh, or what an app on your smartphone. Uh, in my case, I use uh, Soda Goat on my iPhone. So let me talk first about two things pretty important here. The difference between alerts and spots. An alert is something that's typically posted by the operator uh, before he or she goes up onto the mountain and it is uh, in case they can't uh, well for two reasons. One they want to let people that know hey I'm gonna be up there tomorrow or I'm gonna be up there this afternoon etc. Um, as well as if they don't have uh, internet access or some other way to, to uh, 
get a spot created which is a spot is a hey I've been spotted I'm here right now or during this time frame um, please come to contact me um, versus an alert which is something that's a I'm not there yet but this is my plan for example I'm gonna go up on uh, Escadilla Mountain um, I hope to summit by uh, say 1400 Zulu or UTC and uh, I'm hoping to use this frequency you never know so you can see a lot of times on the spot for instance this operator has uh, posted a few different frequencies and the mode so that of course is the other thing is you need to have uh, the equipment and the mode that the operator will be using so that's soda watch uh, let's look over at spots um, there's uh, a few here that are listed and um, these can be created by the operator or anyone else. I've been on a summit with no cell phone access and I've reached out to another operator on the uh, on a repeater and uh, that person went in uh, to Soda Watch and entered my info so that other hams knew where I was. So that could be really handy as well. Keep that in mind. Um, as an operator you could also use APRS um, or satellite. I've used a, a satellite uh, tracker to do the same thing. So there's a lot of different ways to get spotted and uh, it can be pretty important if you're going to be in an area that doesn't have cell phone access. Um, the reason being is if you're only running 5 watts or maybe even less on a mountaintop, um, it gets a little bit harder. But if people know where you're at, they know how to chase you. So as a chaser, this is where you're going to want to come. Um, there is another website and I'll point out a few things uh, on that one. But uh, as we look at this, um, I've got this zoomed in a little bit, but you can see when it was posted. So certainly uh, uh, this one at 1826, it's 2334 right now. Um, this operator is probably not on the mountain. Um, so you, you want to look at what time. Obviously, you want to know the operator, um, where they're at. So now you know where to point your antenna. Uh, in this case, uh, November 3, Bravo Zulu is on uh, in a, on an Arizona summit. Um, you can see the pop-up here. Um, he was spotted on 707.160 sideband at 1832. Uh, it shows you what the name of the mountain is, uh, how high uh, he or she is, and the number of points. Um, if you drill down on it, click, I'm going to open up another tab here, you can get some additional information. Um, Ah, you can see that's in Arizona and Coconino County and if you want to know exactly where then you can get a Google map and it's going to show you exactly where in the world that summit is so we'll zoom out and um, as you can see it's uh, north of uh, I-40 so um, it's up uh, just to the west of Williams Arizona which is excuse me east of Williams and uh, uh, east of Flagstaff so um, excuse me, west of Flagstaff. Okay, at this point, you've got to be thinking to yourself, this guy is out of his mind. Why am I even listening to him? If he can't even figure out what is east or west of something else, how the heck does he even find his way home after work or much less off of a summit? His wife asks herself that same thing all the time. Anyway, uh, let's get back to it. So that is that website. Um, there is another um, website that you can go to. Um, so I'm going to close these. And um, that website is called Soda Atlas. Um, a lot of times uh, it may come up in the map page. All you need to do is go to the top and click on spots. Again, spots are where the operator is right now. The layout's a little bit different, but it's all pretty much the same idea. Um, we'll go back down to uh, November 3, Bravo Zulu, who is in Arizona on 7160. You can see all the same information, the operating mode that that operator is using, um, where they're at, um, the whole shot, along with it, the number of points. It's a little bit easier, in, in my opinion, to kind of just see this all in one shot. Um, but whatever, whichever tool works for you, when an operator um, spots him or herself, uh, 
they're going to show up on both of these websites because they pull from the same data. Um, it's a Soda Watch database. So that's how you uh, find out where an operator is and what mode they're operating. Um, the last piece uh, might be of some interest. You'll see something right here. Um, why did this operator show up on Whiskey 6 Charlie Tango XXX? There is no, this is an invalid uh, summit. The reason is the operator, when they posted an alert, they weren't sure which summit they were going to be able to get to. So they just posted this and on an alert. And what happened was when uh, they started calling CQ on CW, the RBN network picked them up. And there's a program that looks at that, tries to see if they're, if that is a person is listed in uh, Soda Watch as an alert. And in this case, that operator did have one listed. And it's pretty cool because he or she didn't even need to have any kind of internet access. Uh, the reverse beacon network picked that person up and made a spot entry for them. It looks at um, the time and date. And if they're within a particular window, it'll go ahead and create the spot. As this operator changes frequencies, it will create new spots, which is super handy if you're running CW. Um, in this case, you can see that this entry was made by the reverse beacon network, which is over here on the right hand side. That's how I know that. Um, but later, someone went in and updated the entry for this operator. Turns out that it was K6HPX. So um, you can tell who posted the spot as well. If you're running uh, CW, um, you'll see this quite a bit as an operator won't even bother posting a spot because all the information is in uh, an alert. Uh, in many cases, um, they put the full uh, summit in there and it doesn't end up in there like this. So you don't see this very often. But that's pretty much it. That's how you find out uh, where and what time uh, an operator will be or is currently at. So the spots is where you're going to go to because that's where they're at and what time they spotted. Um, if it's uh, within a decent amount of time, that operator is probably still on that frequency um, and uh, running an activation. So get on the radio and uh, make a contact. We're going to talk about that next. Cuting the chase. All right. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, the first thing to remember is the activator controls uh, what's going on. So he or she controls the chase. Uh, secondly, you need to be able to hear the operator. Um, that's really important because if you can't hear them, you're not going to get a contact. Um, and if you're running a thousand watts plus, it may not really help you if you can't hear the other operator. They might be able to hear you just fine, but if you can't hear them, it's not going to work. Um, that's the other thing about this hobby, is if you're sitting in your home shack um, and all you have is 100 watts, if you can hear that operator, he or she can probably hear you because they're most likely only running 5 or maybe 100 watts. I used to uh, run 100 watts from the summit. I do it at times. So if you're going to invest in something, if you really enjoy doing chasing, put up an awesome antenna. Um, there's got to be the guy in, uh, in New Zealand must have a fantastic Yagi up on a, on a uh, tower because I can contact John with, with 10 watts. It's amazing. So that's rule number one. Um, you got to be able to hear them. Wait your turn. That's really important. Uh, certainly we never want to be rude and interrupt someone else's QSO, um, and then call out. So typically, as soon as that QSO is done, uh, and they say 73, thanks a lot. Um, if it's sideband, you'll jump in with your call sign. In my case, it's uh, N1CLC, or obviously if you're CW, for me, it's gonna be this. And then you wait. Uh, if your call sign comes back, then you're in, baby. Now you can, you can Begin your QSO, exchange signal reports, and uh, log the contact. You do have to exchange signal reports uh, because the activator is not going to be able to log his or her contact unless they get a signal report from you. That's really the only requirement here is you hear um, your, the response is definitely back to you 
um, and you exchange signal reports. If the operator responds to someone else, you just need to wait your turn and try it again. Just keep trying. Um, we're up there. It gets pretty crazy. If I'm running CW, um, I'm really slow. And it's hard because there's, when there's a pile up, I may be able to get the first letter from somebody and then I'll try to um, ask, say, W question mark. Um, so wait your turn, uh, be patient, and uh, hopefully you can get a contact with that uh, activator um, as soon as they finish up. So just, just hang in there and keep trying. Um, they really appreciate it, by the way. I can tell you that uh, from experience. Um, so you made the call and waited. You got your signal report. And uh, just one other comment here is a lot of times you'll hear uh, summit to summit, summit to summit, either via uh, sideband or they'll send a, a S2S via CW. They typically get priority uh, for two reasons. Um, it's tougher to break through a pileup with just five watts from a mountaintop. Secondly, um, that operator on a mountaintop uh, has a limited window of time that uh, he or she is going to be up there. They'll have to probably uh, desummit and either head to the next mountaintop or uh, back uh, back home. Uh, whereas typically uh, hams that are chasing from home um, or sipping on a beer and, and uh, uh, taking it easy, they have a little bit more time to, to do it. So... Um, the, the third reason is there's something called summit to summit points that both activators get. So um, if, if you get a little disappointed because the operator on the mountaintop took that summit to summit call, that's why. So um, hopefully you're patient and hang in there. So that's really all there is to executing the chase is uh, you need to log their call sign, the signal report, and what summit they were on. And you do that. So you can log that in sodadata.com and get your points. Let's talk about that. Now that you've logged the contact, it's time to show you how to enter those contacts on Sodadata. So you're going to want to get your points. And uh, to do that, you'll need to have the summit, which includes the association, region, and summit. Uh, I think in our case it was W7A slash... Uh, CS slash or excuse me dash some number that is the summit ID you also need the date and time which uh, if you have a logging program you always enter in that you'll need their call sign you already know yours and then what mode you used to communicate uh, whether it's sideband FM CW uh, what have you um, there's also digital modes I've made contacts via DMR on my little HD so let's uh, take a look at the website and see how we do that Okay, as I said, activators get points, and so do chasers. Um, there's uh, chasers that I know that have over a thousand points, and they get the big award called Shaxloth. They print that out and put it up on their wall, and I'm sure their family is so proud of them. Anyway, um, where do you go to get your points? Well, you go to sodadata.org.uk. Um, I'm going to enlarge this a little bit so you can follow along. We're going to go into the menu here and we're going to go to submit log. So I'm going to submit a chaser or summit to summit entry manually. So the first thing you do is pick the association. In my case, my example here, we're going to do, um, let's say we contacted the operator here on, uh, what did we say? It was over in Arizona on W7A. CS032. So let's do that. W7A. Uh, region was CS, so Coconino County. And he was on, or she was on, 032. So let's go down to 032. Um, Spitz Hill. And the date we did that today, um, actually it was earlier today uh, because we said what time was that uh, at 1832 and this was the operator so I'm just gonna cut and paste that and go here so at 1832 and a call sign uh, that I used would be my call sign the other person's call sign would be this and um, 
I'm just going to make it up as I go along now. So we'll say it was on 7 megahertz. And um, we used CW. And then you can put some notes in here. If it was a summit to summit, you click on this box and you need to enter in your summit and information. And that in this case, I'm not going to do that. And I would typically press submit log. So that would get me the point for that particular operator. Um, I think I missed it before, but uh, you also need to jot down what band you were on in order to get your points, obviously, because um, that's required here. So anyway, that's that's all there is to getting your points um, on the, the SOTA website. Um, if you want to know where do you stand, let's go over here to view results. I'm going to go down to my results, and I think I have a chaser log here. So we'll go into chaser. And uh, let's see, how many points do I have? We'll go down to the bottom here. And I've got a total of 403 pure chaser points. Now, I have a lot more than that, mainly because I get extra points from chasing from a summit. But uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things that you can get to on the website from here. Um, there is one other way that you can log your points. So let's go here, and I'm going to show you that. Um, so I'm going to go to submit logs. I'm going to go to upload. So if you went out and got 50 contacts for the day, you were really, really on top of all the activators that were out there. Entering them manually one at a time is going to be a huge pain in the ass. So what they did is these guys um, made it so that you can upload a file um, that contains all the contact, uh, all your contacts, and as long as it follows. Uh, their data structure, um, you can upload it. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, right here, and, and actually if you, if you do what I did, which is go to Submit Log and Upload, you'll end up on this page. Um, they tell you how to, uh, if, if you, the easiest thing to do is of course use the Add Activation page. Um, if you're unsure of what the file needs to look like, then um, you can use the normal data entry page instead. But what they're going to do is help you out and show you what that data entry page should look like. And here are some examples. Um, V2, uh, comma, and then their call sign. The, um, well, we'll go on and look at mine. But they, they show you pretty much all the fields that would show up on here in different instances. Let me give you an example of what mine looks like. Okay, so we're going to open that file here, and I'm going to show you an example of one that I had, and hopefully we can we can uh, zoom this guy in a little bit so you can see what this file looks like. It's a CSV, which stands for Comma Separated Values, um, and as you can see here, uh, it goes uh, V2 uh, is always the first one, comma my call sign, and I believe the next one would be my summit if I was on a summit then the date, and then the time, and then the band, which is right here, and then the mode, CW, their call sign, excuse me, uh, which is KXOR in this case, and then the um, uh, summit that they were on. What's cool is my application, my logging program will output an ADF file, and then there's a way to convert that into a SOTA log. Just one comment here is you can create a file like that using Excel um, or some other spreadsheet application. I don't know who doesn't have Excel. Um, you can probably do it with uh, Google Spreadsheets as well. But you enter in the exact same data in different columns. So V2 would be the first column, your call sign being the second column, etc. Um, and then you save that file or download it as a CSV file. And that should create a file similar to the example that I was showing you. So um, you take that file and then you go to the SOTO website. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the buttons down here. Oops, wrong page. So then you, you take that file and you upload it. So I'm going to go ahead and try uploading that. It's right. Here's my example file, the CSV file. So I chose the file. I'm going to upload it. And the first thing it's going to do is scan it for any issues. 
Now, in my case, these are all duplicates because I've already uploaded it. If they weren't duplicates, obviously this would all be black. It checks to make sure that the summits are valid summits, uh, etc. And then all I need to do is press the submit button. Obviously, I'm not going to do that here because I've already uploaded this. But that's really all there is to it. There's two ways of doing it, which is a manual way, um, or if you have a whole bunch of contacts, a way to take an export from your logging program and uh, convert those. So on my application, my logging program, I use N3 FJP's Amateur Contact Log. It allows me to highlight just the entries I want to export. I export those into an ADF uh, file and then you just cut and paste the uh, data in here. So I, I paste the uh, uh, text file in here using a text editor, so I cut and paste. Um, typically I would remove that and then I submit and just as a test and what it does is it tries to figure out uh, what summit they're on so you don't have to have a specific field that's designated for summits if you have it anywhere in the file it tries to mine that and figure out and if it sees a valid summit then it throws it in there and this is what you end up with um, so in this case it puts his call sign in you may have to re uh, replace this um, but it picks it must pick it up from the file somewhere for me it doesn't do that but just a quick uh, search and replace you take this file, stick it into a like notepad application, like I did, and uh, save it as a .csv file, and then you can upload that. So pretty simple, <coughs> excuse me, to log a whole bunch of contacts at once. Well, that brings us to the end. Pretty simple uh, to be a chaser and doing summits on the air. And so let's quickly talk about what we covered. We talked about what equipment we need. It really just boils down to uh, a radio that will operate in the same frequency as the uh, operator on the summit. Um, we talked about finding an activator, um, a little bit about alerts, what the heck those are, and spots. Um, we talked about executing the chase. The activator controls the chase. Um, you want to make sure you can hear them because obviously if you can't, you're never going to get that contact. Um, you wait your turn, make a call and wait. If you're uh, call sign comes back then you can collect uh, that as a contact after you've provided a signal report and you'll want their signal report as well to complete the call and then you'll want to jot down the call sign what summit they were on what date and time it was and the frequency so you know what's banned and uh, the other thing we talked about is summit to summit generally has priority and finally we talked about logging the contact. We, you need the summit, which includes the association, region, and summit, date and time, the call sign, and the mode that you use to make the contact. You can enter those one at a time uh, via their um, web GUI, which is very simple to use, or if you have the ability to make a flat file, uh, comma separated uh, value file. Um, it's a heck of a lot easier to upload a lot of contacts at one time. All right, that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching the video. Um, hopefully this uh, generated some interest for you being a chaser um, and explained how to do it for summits on the air. It's pretty darn simple. Um, I kind of look at summits on the air as a yin-yang thing. Activators need chasers and chasers need activators. Um, it's a lot of fun and uh, some kind, sometimes can be quite a challenge uh, to try to pull that QRP station um, out of the noise when he or she's sitting on a mountaintop in Colorado, Wyoming, or, or even Japan, so, uh, and other countries as well. So 73, and have an awesome day.